It's December the 12th and final month of the year, so that means we're going to scrapbook 12 4x6 photos all on one layout. And it's actually a single page project this month, and there's room for as many photos and as many journaling cards as you would like. Everything's going to go on its own little card, and they're all going to hang from the top of a 12x12 12 12 page. So, um, this particular example uses a border stamp by Jenny Ball and Studios, a red and craft polka dot from Pebbles Valentine's line. All of these pattern papers in the middle are Little Black Dress from Basic Gray, and then some um, bits from October Afternoon as well, some stickers. So, I'm going to walk you through another page using this exact same design concept, but a different set of photos, different set of papers and colors. And I'd love for you to scrap along with me. So grab 12 4 by 6 photos. They can be any combination of portrait and landscape this month. And um, whatever supplies you want to use. And let's make a page with 12 4 by 6 photos. Here's a closer look at the first layout. And each photo is just on a pattern paper card. And I used all double-sided pattern papers. So I can add photos on both sides or I can add photo on one side and journaling on the other and you can add little bits along the side if you like so some of these have some little tabs and some stickers along the side and then the idea is that they stack up like a stack of papers and you just see a little tiny bit of each one and when you put this in your album you can either put the whole thing in the album and it, it actually it's not it's not the flattest layout by any means but it, it it's not as lumpy as you might expect, even though this is quite bulky twine and there's an eyelet through every picture. And it actually presses down quite easily. So it will fit in a normal page protector, or you can place it so that all these top layers go um, above the page protector. So the page protector would be here, and these sit on top because it just depends on where you attach them or if you cut a hole of the page protector. You can adjust it easily and then you can either just leave them unprotected on the outside and then it's nice and easy for people to just flip through all the different photos that are there or you can custom make a little page protector for each photo so you would take your ordinary page protector cut it to size and then you can stitch around it you can use washi tape around it you can customize it to um, basically protect each little layer so you would have um, a whole big stack of tiny little page protectors on top of your layout. So whatever works for you, this is a, a very different type of technique and it's not um, the same, it's not something that you would do for all your layouts by any means or your album would be really really thick. But um, for something just now and then when you have a lot of photos it's a great way to do something really quickly and easily because as you'll see as it comes together even though there's a lot of photos involved it's actually a really really simple technique. And um, this was for 12 photos from one day and then the layout I'm going to take you through now is something different for the end of the year and that's a year in review page so I have 12 more photos and these are one photo for every month of the year so this is one for every month in 2011 and I just went through my photo library and picked um, one picture to represent each each month and I tried not to overthink it I just put put them all in a little folder and then picked the 12 and printed them so I'm just trying to do it as as quickly as possible and then with this layout some of the photos are back to back but with the year in review I'm going to put each photo on its own card so that the back can be a whole Si a whole four by six um, piece of journaling so that I can journal about everything we did that particular month and so I'm going to use some four by six journaling cards I think I'm going to use these these are just right journaling cards from American Crafts chap collection and I have a stack of paper that I'm going to use and these are all studio calico papers but from various collections so I've put them in order um, for what's going to go with each photo. So the photos are in order January on the top right through to December at the back and then I've picked what papers I want to follow that same pattern. So Studio Calico from the 
the Calico Classics collection from Memoir. From that's again the classic Calico. Some from Autumn Press. And a couple from uh, State Fair, which is now on sale at TP's, so it's a real bargain. A bit more from Autumn Press. And so this, these are the 12 that will be my, my photo card, or my photo mats. And then a few more here. Some brown, dark brown cardstock for the very background. Then I'm going to cover most of that with this dotted paper by October Afternoon. And really what I wanted to do is use the October Afternoon polka dots as my background. But because of the weight of 12 photos and all those mats, you really do want something that's quite heavy duty in the background. So I've just um, doubled that up. So I, I just cut a tiny little bit, about a quarter of an inch off two sides of the pattern paper. And I'll attach that to the dark brown cardstock. So it's mostly for stability rather than for design. And then the, where I used this large uh, red dotty block here, I'm going to use this um, number print from State Fair, which picks up that turquoise, but I also like the idea of all the different numbers to kind of represent a year in review and all the different things that go into that. So that's where I'm going to start. I'll go ahead and attach this pattern paper, and then I have lots of pattern paper to remain to get done. To cut the photo mats, what I do is start with the very first photo, that's the one that's going to be on the top. This mat's going to be smallest. So go ahead and cut one mat using the photo as a guide. Then just take your stack of papers and you can use the measurement that you cut for this one and then just make each one a quarter or half an inch bigger depending on how many layers you're going to have so that each layer is following the same ratio it's always going to be that that same sort of shape but the next one would just have another quarter of an inch frame all the way around until you have as many cards as you need so here are all my photos cut to size I basically start with the photo is four by six, so then I make that first mat four and a quarter by six and a quarter, and then each one gets a quarter inch bigger. So the next mat is four and a half by six and a half, four and three quarter by six and three quarter, five by seven, and so forth. Just keep going until you have as many cards as you need. The this layout I've done twelve different um, cards because I want to put a journaling card with each photo. The first layout I just had eight cards because I doubled up some photos and didn't have a journaling card for every single page. So the idea then is that we'll punch a hole in each of these or you can just staple something to it. You don't have to punch a hole. So you can do punch a hole and put an eyelet. You can use a brad. You can use a staple. And what you want is something that will be free um, like it's attaching it but it's it's free so it's not going to keep it rigidly in place so you could use twine ribbon string anything like that that's going to let it and um, have some movement and let when people look at your album let them really easily flip through the, the photos so I haven't put the journaling on yet and um, and I wanted to show you that I'm mixing up the portrait photos with the landscape and the only thing I do is I try to keep all the landscapes in the same direction so it's easy to flip because since it'll be on a piece of string or twine it's really s simple to just um, flip it sideways to see but that way when you get to the next one you're already in the habit of of twirling it in the right direction and it's not very confusing so all the photos are there and I want to add the journaling to each one and you'll notice as the mats get bigger the pages look a little bit more like they need some more embellishment so for this page I'm going to pull out some stickers and, and various bits and pieces. Basically I, I've pulled out lots and lots of label stickers. So some from Studio Calico, October Afternoon, and My Mind's Eye, and Jenny Bolin. So I'm going to add um, the month of course and then maybe some other bits with the label stickers to make it so these mats aren't quite so empty and maybe just a little bit of extra embellishment to each one. 
and of course I need to add my journaling cards. Some of these are really easy and I can just journal right on there. Since there are straight lines, I can just journal right onto the card and not worry about adding anything. And that one too. This one would be a little bit harder to write on and some of them are, are a little bit, like this is very busy and probably a bit complicated to read if I just handwrite on top of it. So I'll add a journaling card over the top just to make it easier to write. This is the most time consuming part of the page. I've added labels to all of the photos so that I could add the date. You can just write it on, you can stamp it on, you can use stickers, whatever you prefer. You can use your printer. Um, and then on the back of each card I've added my journaling that goes with the photo on the front. You can, if you don't want to do a month by month page, because you can use any set of photos that you want to use, you might prefer that this journaling goes with this picture, or it can go on um, the photo matching what's on the back. It just depends on what kind of uh, group of pictures you want to use. And so for a year in review, the journaling on the back just tends to work quite well. So I now have the front and back of each of these ready. I'll just flip through so you can see. So when this is on a, a bit of string, then you would just turn it and be able to see. So they're really quite simple. I may go back and add a little bit of, of ink or paint uh, to these little clusters of stickers, I'm thinking. But at the moment, just really simple journaling and, and stickers. I did add a few little things on very tiny pop dots, but I didn't use any bulky embellishments like buttons or um, big brads or gems or anything because I, I want to make sure that I don't add too much bulk so that it will still fit in my album. I don't, I don't really want this to be a mini book attached to a page. and I, I like the idea that it is a mini book on a layout, but I want my album to be able to hold the page. So I've tried to keep the big bulky things to a minimum because such a big stack of paper is enough bulk on its own. So that's basically the idea. So that's the, time, the part of the page that will take um, a fair bit of time. But it is rather simple. It's just that with 12 of them, it takes a while. And, and for a year in review, you may need to go back. I used my phone and went through my um, all my pictures for the year trying to figure out what I did in each month and that sort of thing to get the journaling right month by month. Um, it just depends on how you keep those sorts of records. You may have them in an album already, you may have them on your computer or your phone or anything like that. You can use your, um, your Facebook page if that helps, things like that. Okay, so things that are left to do. We want to attach these and um, so I need to find a way to punch holes or attach string by stapling or sewing or anything like that so that all of these can hang from the top of the page. And I also still want a title on this page at some point and I'm going to do that with some thickers. So I have some big chunky um, letters. That's the sunset set from American Crafts and this is a glittery alphabet called Sunny. One little trick is to take this back page, and I don't actually have anything on the back of this one. I've added the journaling at the bottom here, and I'm going to go ahead and attach it straight to the background so that then I can align the rest of the stack by using this one as sort of a, a, a rule so everything will be stacked on top of this one. It just makes it a little bit easier that way. Now for the first page I did, I used eyelets on each of the pages. So I punched a hole and set an eyelet and then added some quite thick twine and just knotted them all in place. This one I'm going to use something a little bit more delicate. I'm going to use some brads and some baker's twine.
Here's how it's going to look. I'm using quite flat brads so that I don't add too much dimension. I love pearl brads and brads with gems and things on the top, but they're too bulky and when stacked up they're just not going to work in the page protector. So I've used some that are quite plain and flat. And I'm just using a paper piercer and then some baker's twine. So here's what you want to do. Punch a hole with the paper piercer and in the center toward the top and with especially with the smaller ones I do go right through the photo because I think it adds a bit more stability. Um, I know it's horrible to look at paper piercers on camera <laughs> so I promise I'm not going to punch a hole through my fingers. There we go. And then take your baker's twine and the brad. Take the baker's twine and put it through the feet of the brad. Put the brad partially through and then you can loop this a few times. Press it through and set the brad. And then you'll want this long enough basically to go to the top and then back again because you're going to want to tie it so you need to make sure you have a little bit extra so I just double the distance from there to the top of the page and I trim off a little bit here so do that for for all of the um, the photos in the stack and then we'll be able to attach them all here at the top Here's that finished stack. Every photo has a brad and the baker's twine, including the photo that's attached to the to the background. I just make them um, look the same. So even though this one isn't really um, serving a purpose with the string, just that way it matches up with everything else. Then stack up all the papers so they're roughly in the right position so that all the layers can show and then pull all the string up to the top. Now this will seem a little um, extra bulky because you've also got the short ends of the strings um, that are there as well, so uh, you don't want to tie those or sew those down necessarily. Just feed out the, the shorter strings. Then you've got a few options for how to attach this to the top of the page. One of my favorite ways is to just take a sewing machine and run a, a stitch line right across the top and stitch all those strings straight down to the page. This is probably my favorite way to do it, but it's also the way I can't do it right now because my sewing machine is um, packed away in a box and I can't get to it just yet. Oh, so sad, sad times, but there we go. So I really love that idea, but it... I can't do it on this particular page. With the other page, I stapled the twine in place. So I just did several staples over a few strings at a time, and then tied a big knot that would be over the top of the page protector. This would just come out at the top. And there's also the idea that you can punch a hole in the top of the page and then loop everything through and tie it. This works well with something that's quite delicate like baker's twine or it works well with ribbon. So you can tie a really lush uh, ribbon uh, or ribbon bow with some satin or something lovely. So I'm going to punch a hole here, loop everything through and then tie it so the twine will still come out the top of the page protector and just kind of sit over the top. And um, It won't be a big fancy bow, it will just be a, a cute little kind of knot or bow depending on how it works.
So there is my finished page. You can add as much embellishment around the side if, as you want. You can add stamping, you can add stickers, chipboard shapes, more journaling, whatever you would like. Um, but this is the idea and this is this month's design concept, a stack of 12 photos. So I would love for you to join us. There's two chances to win and you can have a month to upload your layout. And next year, um, not 4 by 6 photo love, but a little something new. So I hope you'll come back and see what we have in store for you in 2012. Thanks very much for watching. It's been a great year. Thanks. Bye-bye.